on to the valve side of the intake runners. What? We're gonna be clearing these out. Raleigh is here with me, but unfortunately he doesn't get to do any grinding. So he's gonna be coloring his stained glass windows while we are working on the engine. So we're all gonna be very productive today. Say hi, Raleigh. Hi. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing here is Got a lot of light up in there so that we can make it a little bit clear. So these are hardened valve seats that Ford put in in the early V8 blocks. So we don't want to ruin those. So what we're going to do is we're going to be trimming up the roof of this as much as possible because there's extra material that's going up into the um, short radius of the intake runner here. So we're going to be trimming this down as close to the hardened valve seat as we can get it and then curving it up and smoothing out the bottom. Now then down here at the bottom, you see right here, there's a large um, flat area of metal and that's excess because this is where the valve guide sits and that's just, uh, it's basically just gonna be sitting there. So all of this extra is just creating another lip for the, the air to go around. So we're gonna be cutting this down basically to the edge of where the valve guide sits in. So that's a lot of lip material that's gonna come out. And then there's a lot of stuff on the bottom that's gonna go out as well as we smooth it. Plus around here, we can be widening this out a fair amount to get as much air in there as possible. So we're gonna be doing that for all of the intakes and then on this side as well, we're going to be working the outlet manifolds and we'll be getting to that eventually. But a lot of, let's see if I can put this here, a lot of this lip right here is going to be cleared out because there's a lot of extra material that's kind of making it difficult for the exhaust gases to get out. So we'll get more into that when we get to the exhaust, but for now, we're going to be doing a nice time lapse of doing some intake runners.
All right, so this is an unworked intake runner. You can see the big lip right there, the big flat. And this hasn't been cut away. Over to one that has been done. So you can see we've come to a point here. We widen this out. Shiny. Widen out this side. Widen out this side. Smooth it all around into here so it's a smooth uh, transition from the intake runner up into the combustion chamber as much as we possibly can. There's only so much you can do. But we tried to get around as much as we can all the way over to the side here, keeping it a nice small lip right here. And then of course, not cutting into the hardened valve seat. You can see how it transitions right underneath that hardened valve seat and up inside there's probably a little bit more material I could take out, but I'm not going for, I did this one as well, but I'm not going for a street rod. I'm just trying to get it to breathe just a little bit better. You know, that's gonna help increase the amount of oxygen and fuel going into the combustion chamber. And now we'll do the rest of them. Not taking too long. First, first you do the hogging out of the most of the metal and then take a sanding one to it. And I'll take another fine sanding wheel to this to make it a lot more smooth. Not mirror finish, but you know, something nice and smooth. All right, so I'm gonna get busy and I'll be back when it's time to do the exhaust manifolds and the exhaust outlets. I can't I see sparks. Okay, all four inlet intakes have been ground out. No lip there. Very little lip there. And polished, not to a mirror finish, but good enough. Good enough. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the outlets. Now the outlets, which I'm gonna to have to find a good way to shine the light. All right, so let's start with this here, this huge upper lip. So there's a lot of material here. Basically, we're gonna take it all off. You can see the line where the hardened valve seat ends. We're gonna take off all of that Plus widen it out a little bit out here. A lot of this going away up here. And not as much, but some of it down here. And then, let's see if I can get a light to shine down there. Okay. See that lip where the, the valve guide sits? Just like before. We're going to take that down to a minimum and open up that, what looks kind of like a little smile there, smiley face, open that up just a little bit more, smooth it out. Ultimately, it's gonna allow a lot more air flow for the exhaust to get out quicker, less pressure, like uh, more efficient flow of air out of the cylinder to clear the way for new. So I'll get this one done show you all what it looks like and then we'll get this finished and move on to the manifold section all right so sorry it's very difficult to get light into there so you can see that the lip down where the valve guide sits is a lot thinner you can see that the lip here at the top where the valve sits is cut away. You can 
smoothed out. And to compare to one that hasn't been done, so from that to that, you can see it's a lot more open, you know, as best as can be. Just really want to get those exhaust gases out of that cylinder with as little effort as possible. All right, so let me do the others. This is the external ones, the ones on the inside. So on a flathead V8, the center two cylinders share an exhaust port. So that's why you'll notice down here, there are only three manifold connections. Some people look at this block and they think, oh, it's a six, six cylinder. Nope. So this is where you're going to get a lot of your cracks in the block because two cylinders sharing one exhaust is going to create a lot more heat. So there's going to be a lot more heat concentrated here. So with your um, water flowing through there, you're going to have a bigger temperature differential, a lot higher predilection for cracking at this point. But it's kind of the same thing in here with these ports, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take that uh, valve guide lip down and we're going to open up the top lip there, basically remove it down to the point that the hardened valve seat is in and we will call it good. Then I've got to get into the manifold section of the exhaust port and that's going to be a little bit more challenging because it's kind of upside down from where we are right now. So I'll have to flip this up and then obviously attach the lifting fixture turn it around 180 degrees so I can get to the other three. But making good progress. Most of this is done in one day. Be back in a little bit when these are done. All right, there you have it. All of these have been polished as much as I'm going to do them. Carved away. There's one of the internal exhaust. Nicely opened up. Made as smooth as I'm going to get it. And now it's on to the exhaust manifold openings. Be back once I get this thing flipped over. It's a sunny day here today, so I decided to use the sun for a little bit better light. So I'm going to be working on the exhaust port at the manifold side. So I've already put the die come on because there's going to be a lot of material to remove. Can you see the scribe that I've made there? So I numbered each of the exhaust gaskets so I could made them up later, you know, just in case there was any differences. And uh, you can see that circle that I've scribed in there. That's the amount of material that we're going to be removing. But, you know, we can't just go plunging all the way and we got to blend it a little bit. So this is the forward side of the block. The center has a significant amount too, but this is the one that you're most limited on because there's only so much material. I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's the, that's the cylinder walls there. They're going to each side, so the hot exhaust gas is coming out right in between those two cylinders that is sharing the same exhaust. And so, you know, that's relatively thin, so we're gonna to have to blend that into there pretty well. I think a 16th of an inch is all you're really supposed to take off um, once you get past uh, like an inch in there but the top and the bottom there's a lot of material according to the reference that i saw so there's a lot of material that we can remove from uh, mostly the bottom there's plenty in the bottom this is the top it's upside down right now the block is upside down so this is basically going to be taking this amount of material straight in and then of course you can see a machining ridge in here from a plunge cut that's made after it was manufactured and then the transmission side of the block is kind of the same way there's a lot of material to be moved out here and then blend into the side there. So all this is gonna be blended. So the way the plunge cut is made, it comes in, it makes a hard, there's a hard stop right here. You can see that. 
And so we need to take this and smooth all this. You can see how much material is coming out of here. And the reference I saw said we're opening up about 30%. So that's a lot more exhaust gas that's coming in. So this thing's gonna breathe a lot better. So this will be the last step for porting. And then we're gonna go into cleaning up some of this ugliness. This is just from the foundry, you know, this is just big hunks of metal. So we can round this off and make this a little bit prettier. And there's a bunch of spots around that we can take these sharp points off and just kind of make it a nicer block. So I'll be back when I'm done with that porting and I'll show you each one. Okay, so this is the first one, number one, closest to the front of the block. I had a lot of material move out here. You can see, I don't know if we can get up in there, focus inside of here. But all of this, all of this has been hogged out. Let me get a light to shine in there and show you. Well, the sun's so bright that it doesn't matter whether I have the light shining in there or not. So, let's see. Can we focus? Yeah, that's better. There you can kind of see there's still a little lip here, but I left that because I'm a little concerned about this edge. It's right underneath here, and I don't want to break through, obviously. You know, so there's a little lip there, but I hogged out a lot of material. And there, back here, where my finger is here, before this is done, you can feel that there's a serious ridge. I mean, it's just basically a wall that the air is hitting on its way out, and that is all gone now. And I was actually surprised. I kept whittling away at it, and it's, you know, it's, I figured, you know, if it's there, there's gotta be plenty of material because it's still flowing out here. So uh, it it's all gone, didn't poke through anything, and it is so much wider in there. I, I hogged out this a little bit. There's not a whole lot you can do here because you're coming up against cylinder wall, as you can see. Cylinder wall is right there, right in there. So it's best, it, it's basically just taking out here and blending in. So it's gonna make a little bit of a turn here, but it's not a severe 90 degree turn anymore. So the air will flow out better. So next I'm gonna move on to the center one. And I will be back when this is done. Well, that one didn't take nearly as long. You can see the hole there through on the other side. Really nice. But, um. Well, notice I have a, a splint on my finger as I was grafting apple trees right over here. He's grafting some apple trees. And when I was grafting one of them, making a little notch inside, that grafting knife went right through and tagged my finger. Got me good. So anyway, it's right on the knuckle, so I've got it splinted so that it can't move. I think there might be things on my on my lens preventing me from focus. Anyway, as you can see, nicely opened up. So the majority of the material came from the top, which you only go, recommendation is only go about an inch to inch and a half in, and you can take as much material to, to keep it even. But the bottom has plenty. So I've still got some work to do with uh, the uh, ruby stone to smooth it out a little bit. And then of course I go back to the flap wheels, but you gotta be careful here in the sides because again, that's the, the cylinder walls and the water jacket and everything. So you don't wanna pop through that. But I don't know if you can see it, but it's it transitioned smoothly right into that cylinder wall in there. Yeah. All right, moving on to the transmission side, which doesn't look like there's as much material to hog out here, but there is, like my finger, I don't know if you can see this, but my finger is completely wrapping around this. So this whole edge here is gonna be basically ground away. And then this side here will just be basically smoothed from the outside of the mark to match this as much as possible. It's gonna to be to make it a gentler curve. You can't take the whole curve out of it, but it'll make it a gentler curve. All right, be back when that one's done. All right, sun shining directly in that one. 
And you can see that this is almost, there's a little bit of a transition there, but it's almost a straight shot. That table I was telling you back back here, can't get rid of the whole thing because it comes up to this transition here inside. So you want to keep that wall thickness. So it still does, you know, curve back, but it's much smoother. There's no hard, it's rounded over, taken out as much as I think I can safely do. And it's transitioning really well. I think I've taken enough out of the roof up there as well in the bottom. All right, so that takes care of the manifold at outlets on this side. Now I'm gonna get the ruby wheel on here and then the polisher and this side will be done and it'll be transitioning onto the other side. And that takes care of porting. I'm not gonna show you the other side, you know, that it's just a repeat. Um, but yeah, so I have to say, I haven't really found a, a YouTube video out there that had them actually doing the porting. But um, just to show you real quick that where I got my information is from a book called, Really good pictures. Everything, I mean, cutaways of the, the engine and everything. But it's Mike Bishop and Vern Tartle's Ford Flathead V8 engines, how to modify and rebuild. And so it's got, it's a really good reference for all this. A lot of this is doing, you know, high powered stuff, but still a lot of these things on the block just to help it breathe easier, inlet, outlet, all these things are good for even a street restoration. Um, like I said, in, originally, I'm, you know, going to make some changes to give it a little bit more horsepower to be a little bit better on the highway or the roads or whatever, you know, just give it a little more oomph where you can. And so part of that is helping this engine breathe better. So, all right, that should do it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you do, please like and subscribe, give a thumbs up and help me get this out to more people. And I will see you next time. After, well, I'll give you an update now or, or a plan. So now that this is done, we'll say it's done. I'm gonna take this back to the machine shop and they are then going to deck this surface and hopefully deck the inlet manifold surface, which means you take it um, perfectly flat, parallel to the ground and run a uh, tool over the top of it, big rotating tool, and it makes sure that this surface here is completely flat. And so that helps with, you know, sealing the engine. I guess this actually isn't done. I'll probably give a little bit of footage. I'm gonna let the boys play around with the, the grinder here on these. So if you guys are interested in that, you probably would be watching kids play with power tools. I mean, who wouldn't be, right? I'll film that included in too. But that'll be the goings out. And I will talk to you next time. Take care.